Minivan to the Station. A story from It's a Rum Life, Book 2, Boston, 1960 to 1970. This is part of Tales from the Lincolnshire Standard. Looking back on these times now, it is difficult to see when I managed to devote my time to my basic job, when at any time I was going to be asked to imitate Sterling Moss or Mike Hawthorne in a minivan. Another of the fairly frequent newspaper printing press breakdowns had occurred. The first I knew of it was when the works manager cornered my boss to request my services at short notice just to run the Sleaford Standard down to the station for the next train. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes, he said. He sounded very convincing, but he'd not yet found the van. By the time we had, the train departure was imminent. It was a bit more than a mile to the station, through the marketplace, round the five lamps roundabout, over the Old Town Bridge, through the traffic lights at the top of Bridge Street, and down West Street. Everything went well for the first minute or two, then entering West Street everything changed. The road was dug up, or so it seemed. In front of me was a mess of manhole covers, gullies and potholes. The road was being resurfaced. I had to choose, and quickly, over the manholes that seemed to be everywhere and sticking up above everything else, or slalom between them. I was still doing the maximum permitted 30 mph and could virtually hear the train whistle as it was about to depart. Just half a mile to go and I daren't slacken speed. I chose to go over the manholes. Then, as the first one approached, it seemed huge. My confidence bled faster than lightning and my foot touched the brakes, perhaps a bit too strongly as the next thing was a tremendous grinding noise from between my feet. The van kept going and we were over. All the others seemed much smaller after that. I had the confidence not to break any more until the van was well onto the station platform. The newspapers caught the train, but the van was not running too well on the return journey. A loud throaty noise came from under the bonnet and there was an oil slick following me down the road. Reporting back to the works manager with the good news that the papers had made it, I had also to impart my tale of woe. Take it round to the garage, he said. Not a word to a soul. I'll telephone them that you're coming, he concluded. The van had gone in for a service, plus new sump and complete exhaust system that could be seen dragging along behind. That's the end of that little story. I hope you enjoyed listening to it. You can see lot more, lots more information on our website, www.crackerbooks.com. There's also lots of videos to watch free on Keith Sanders, The Short Story Man, on YouTube. There's also a little shop with more information Richard Keith Sanders dot sells that's S E L Z dot com. I hope you listen to more stories as they come along. Thank you for listening.